four years ago, then San Antonio Mayor Julian Castro electrified the crowd at the Democratic convention. He said a speech by Mitt Romney proved that the 2012 Republican nominee did not understand working Americans. Start a business, he said. But how? Borrow money if you have to from your parents, he told him. <laughs> Gee, why didn't I think of that? Some people are lucky enough to borrow money from their parents. But that shouldn't determine whether you can pursue your dreams. Not in America, not here, not in the 21st century. The former mayor is here with his twin brother. That's Texas Congressman Joaquin Castro, who will speak at this year's convention on Thursday night. Good morning to you. Good, Good to be you. with you. So, Julian, Joaquin, just so you two don't get each other mixed up. <laughs> well, he says Welcome. that, you know, we're twins, but I'm a little bit uglier than he is. Uh, so, uh, you can tell uh, since we're both here. The only, oh, yes, only brothers could say that to each other. Joaquin, let's start with you, because Thursday night, big, big night for you. Yeah. You no, ready? You nervous? How are you preparing? You know, I, I was more nervous four years ago. And for four him? years ago, that's right, he was keynoting, and I I was doing a two-minute introduction, and it felt like the weight of the world. So I actually feel more comfortable this time. Is he giving you pointers? Or you? I don't want to talk like you're not here. Are you giving him pointers? No, I, I'm trying to, but he never listens to me anyway. So no, I think yeah. he's going to do great. And everyone last night did such a fantastic job that they've set a very high bar for everybody coming after him. Let's talk about what we saw last night. I mean, I think across the the board, people say Michelle Obama stole the night with an address, which is Gail said. What did you say? She used. A scalpel. Yeah, she used a scalpel and didn't draw any blood. It was yeah. clean. That is a wonderful yes. way to put it. Yes. That's right. What, a, what yes. about that? By, out, by not using Donald Trump's name, but that speech was a clear rebuke to not only yeah. him personally, Absolutely. but the yeah. values he's espoused. And an aspiration to higher ideas. Yeah, it, it was powerful. It was personal. It, it resonated, I think, with a cross section of Americans. Uh, the, the way that basically she said, "Look." Uh, you know, we have made so much progress in this country, no matter who you are. And this is the greatest nation on earth already. And why would we want to go back? Why would we want to go in a direction uh, without naming Donald Trump that he wants to take us? It, it was just so brilliantly done. And I tell you, I was sitting there watching, and I thought, four years ago, I, I did the keynote speech, and then she spoke right after me. And I remember feeling, nobody's going to remember my speech because she did such a great job. Yeah. And I bet everybody felt like that yesterday yeah. as well. Let's talk yeah. about where the party is, because, I mean, clearly it's not the party that Bill Clinton uh, took uh, command of in 1992. Uh, clearly, Hillary Clinton said to me, you know, that it's a right center, I mean, a left center party. Others are saying it's moved dramatically to the left. And as evidence, they will present to you what they heard last night from Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders. Well, I think I think that's because since 1992, obviously, the country has changed and the issues have changed. And we went through a great recession. And much of our politics, both in the Democratic Party, but really in the nation, has been a reaction to that. So when you hear about things like income inequality and raising wages for the American people and creating jobs for people that have been out of work, I think that's where that's what Americans are thinking about. That's what they care about. And that's what you're hearing up on the stage. And who do you think the Donald Trump constituency is? Uh, I think it's a lot of people that are also anxious about the economy, uh, people that are trying to make it in the United States. Um, and, but there also has been a lot of anger that has been stoked by people like Donald Trump and Ted Cruz. You know, you can take people's emotions and do different things with them. And I think that this year, the Republican Party and Donald Trump have taken that to a very dark and gloomy place. But, but speaking of emotions, Joaquin, you had a lot of bruised feelings in the room last night. Sure. People, the Bernie Sanders supporters, which you pointed out, how many? Forty-six percent of the delegates are Bernie are Sanders Bernie. delegates in that right. convention hall, and that's they a, say we're here lot. and we want to be heard. How will you? How do you think is the best way to unify them to get them on board? Everybody keeps saying party unity, party unity, but you still get the feeling that we're not quite there yet for the Democratic Party. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the, the leak of the emails didn't help from the DNC, and I think that that brought the emotion back, uh, even though Senator Sanders has been very good and was very good last night about calling for party unity, about being clear that he's getting fully behind Secretary Clinton. And look, I don't think there's anybody, Republican or Democrat, who wasn't incredibly impressed by the campaign that Senator Sanders Also, ran. to her credit, uh, 
Secretary Clinton has embraced a lot of the most right. popular parts of the agenda that, that Senator Sanders ran on. If you talk about uh, ensuring that a student can go to college, so he has moved her to his own point of view. Oh, I mean, but she, I think, has listened to, to uh, the Democratic primary base and to the American people on on student loans, on health care, on other issues. So that's going to help unify the party as well. Which of you wants to challenge Ted Cruz yeah. in 2018? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> good uh, question. Very good question. <laughs> really? Yeah. really? I mean, right now, that's not in our plans to run in Texas. But is he vulnerable? Oh, are you going to run? Yeah. Is he vulnerable? <laughs> I think he is. Uh, I, I think that, uh, very tellingly, you know, he used to be the most popular politician in Texas, and his standing has fallen uh, fairly far. All the uh, I don't more think reason. This... Why wouldn't you want to take that on, back to Charlie's yeah. I'm surprised that both of you were Well, he's that. speaking for himself. So. Okay. <laughs> he's speaking for me on this one. I was trying to provide him cover, but, you know, he never follows my lead. You know, what a little what you're you're you, yeah. I'm going to take a look at it in 2018. I'll take a look at, at that and other opportunities. I, I'm never, I've never been somebody that said, in two years, I've absolutely got to run for senator or governor, but I will take a look at it. Two more quick questions. What about, you've been mentioned, each of you, as a replacement for Debbie Wasserman Schultz as head of the DNC. Would you do that? Uh, I have no interest in that. Since I didn't speak well for him the first time, he might want to answer that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you never say then, never, but it hasn't been on my radar. Yeah, that, that's just not something. I'm going to take that as a yes yeah. from you, Joaquin. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, yeah. One, of, one of the most He's open to it and one of the, everything. One yeah. of the most important lessons from the last campaign was the growing demographics and changes in this country, Hispanic voters. Sure. Mitt Romney had the lowest share of Hispanic voters, 27 percent, since I think Ford. What do you see now is happening? You're both Hispanic, you're from Texas. What do you see happening in terms of the Hispanic vote? We're hearing and reporting record registration among right. Hispanic voters oh, all across coming. the country, it, Colorado, it, Texas. Yeah. No. That's right. So in 2012, Hispanics had one of the lowest rates of turnout at 48 percent compared to a mainstream at about 65, 66 percent. I expect that to go at least into the 50s, really? the low 50s. So I think you're going to see several points more of turnout. Donald Trump, in a negative way, has motivated the Hispanic community like no presidential candidate before. And I think uh, that, unfortunately, for Republicans up and down the ballot, they're going to feel that this in sort of November. One-word one answer. Uh, what percentage, generally, do you think? the Latino vote will be um, in the general election? I would say 75% uh, or above. I mean, about let, me, let me put it this way. No, no, in terms of the total vote, will the oh, Latinos oh, oh. be 15%, 20%? I, like 75%? Yeah. No. <laughs> I think 75% oh, are more than the numbers. Yeah. 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 No, 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 they're about 16% of the population, but yeah. much less because they're a lot younger. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know, 9 Yeah, I think it'll be, about, like it'll be about 2 percentage points higher, at least, than where it was last time. Right. But I'll put it like this. Our grandmother came here from Mexico as a 6-year-old orphan in 1922. And for a lot of Hispanics listening to Donald Trump right. talk about Mexican immigrants being rapists and murderers, no, that's going to get them to go to the polls, no doubt. Yeah. Right. You have had the last word. Yeah. And good luck to you on Thursday night. We'll be watching and you will be judged. And you'll be speaking for yourself. <laughs> yes, that makes speaking. me feel better. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. We're here to help. Good to see you again, <laughs> both you of you. <laughs> Thank you, Castro Brothers. Same we'll age. We went to rival high schools in San Antonio, oh, you know, oh, by oh, the way. Oh, rival oh, high schools. Oh, San Antonio. But look how you all have good come. Very nice. Doing well for yourselves, Something people. in the water in San Antonio. Doing well for yourselves. We'll be back for tonight's primetime coverage, including the speech by former President Bill Clinton. Our CBS News special begins at 10 p.m. That's 9 Central. And you can find continuous coverage of the convention on our streaming network news, CBSN.